They said there were spirits. I didn't take it that serious. It's just us. I can't be. I know you're here. There was a presence there. <laughs> Please help me. It was real. I was dead wrong. <laughs> to watch is based on true events. Some details have been altered to protect confidentiality. My name is Alex, and I work the night shift. It's the middle of the night. Alex is heading to his new job as a custodian. I was really excited about working at the school. My daughter went there, I had benefits. The school has a reputation in town for being haunted, but Alex needs the job to pay for his daughter's tuition. I heard rumors about the school, that it was built over a cemetery. I didn't know what to think, what to expect, but I had to work there. It was a big school. I knew it was going to be hard because I was the only one there with all the duties that I had to do. My typical duties on the shift is cleaning the classrooms, cleaning the restrooms, cleaning the halls, cleaning the gym. On my first shift, it is very quiet. But that changes quickly. The environment at the school at night is very eerie. It was not lit up very good. It just feels uncomfortable. Shortly after, I noticed things happening. Kept on hearing a lot of noises in the hallways, but I mean, it's an old school, so I didn't think anything of it. It's getting too strange to ignore, especially the eerie footsteps echoing from the hallway. Hello? Throughout the night, that was happening. There was nobody else around. How could that happen? Hello, somebody there? I heard what sounded like someone whistling. Just like that. It's like if somebody was trying to get my attention with that whistle. Hello? I hear giggling along with that whistling. It was real creepy. What's going on? Hello? The doors are locked to the school. The gate is locked. This was not making any sense. I know that I'm alone in that school. I started searching to see where this whistling was coming from. Hello? Somebody there? Someone or something is deliberately toying Hello? with Alex. <laughs> Somebody there? I went upstairs. I came downstairs. I did not find the location or somebody that was whistling. Hello? I was trying to find the source. Hello? Could not find it. I know you're here! Alex's first night is wretched, but he knows he can't afford to quit. 
I need to take care of my daughter. I need to work here. Please help me. Over the next few nights, Alex's uneasiness grows. As time went on, things started to get worse. Somebody was watching me as I was doing my work. And then I just heard that whistling again. Whistling and giggling. I'm not chasing you tonight. Uh, I got work to do. <laughs> not gonna happen. He does his best to ignore it, but something in that school is taunting him. As I was cleaning a classroom, I saw books fall. The books started to shuffle by themselves. There's no way that these books can shuffle by themselves. Something had to push these books and make them shuffle. It seemed like an unseen hand moving the books. In Alex's case, when you see something with textbooks go flying, when you see objects moving, that's poltergeist activity. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, I heard this bang, like if somebody took a sledgehammer and hit the door. And I'm like, I was startled. What's going on? I've never seen this before. Anybody there? Who's here with me? Rumors of evil at the school are proving to be real. He said there were spirits. I didn't take it that serious. <sighs> I was dead wrong. While working as the night custodian at his daughter's school, Alex is repeatedly disturbed by objects moving on their own and unexplained sounds that follow his every move. I need to take care of my daughter. I need to work here. I could see something was there. <laughs> and now, a glimpse of some kind of entity. I was terrified. After I got my composure back, I went to look. There was nothing there. I'm wondering what is going on. There's something going on here. There has to be spirits here. And I'm scared. Shaken to his core, Alex turns to school officials to help him understand the strange late night happenings. As all the things started to escalate, I started talking to the staff and then they told me about Clown Boy. He was buried under the school. It's a little dusty, but I found it. I want you to see this. Clown Boy was a clown in the circus. He developed the plague, and he died and was buried in the cemetery under the school. You being serious? Yes. I felt very uncomfortable that it was built over a cemetery. It's all starting to make sense now. A lot of times when, uh, when you disturb a burial ground, it tends to upset the spiritual energy that's there. It's very common for, for malevolent spirits to be attached either to a building or to be attached to a ground itself. Night after night, the haunting grows in intensity. Every night I was terrified, having to go back. I felt like I was being tested and I felt like I was being run off. But at the same time, my daughter comes to this school and I need to be here. 
One night, I had to change the toilet paper in the boys' restroom. And that restroom was freezing. I couldn't get warm. I felt a scratch on my back. I turned around, I immediately turned around. Who's there, who's scratching me? There was nobody there. I saw the red scratch on my back. I couldn't believe it. And it hurt and burned. This is violent and I'm scared, really scared. It's about to get worse. I saw somebody standing there. And I saw Clown Boy. I saw him. No! No! Please! It was aggressive. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. He was laughing, evil laugh. I didn't know what his intentions were. None of this made any sense. And then I just got released. I ran back into the classroom. I was terrified. The spirit has now shown itself as malevolent. When a spirit has inflicted harm on you, you're at the point of an extreme haunting. How am I full of grace? I waited in that classroom for a while. I didn't want to go back out there. I didn't want to see Clown Boy again. What's next? Amen. What is he capable of doing next? What did you do? I was scared, terrified. But I opened the door. and there was nobody there. I left that school, never went back. I had enough. I got a new job, paid her tuition. Years after leaving the school, Alex has recurring nightmares where the buried spirits are calling him back. Because of these events, I know that there are good spirits and bad spirits in the world. This just solidifies my belief. I felt like I was targeted for some reason. I am so happy to be away from Clown Boy and that school. My name is Mariah and I work the night shift. Mariah's career is on the move. She's just landed a job as a salon coordinator at a luxurious spa. It was like my first grown up job and I was really excited to start it because it was a 30,000 square foot uh, salon and day spa. It was really glamorous and elaborate and it was a really good opportunity. And I love the beauty industry. So I was like, this could be my end to just like start the rest of whatever happens. Mariah loves her job, but the hours are long. Together with another coworker, she often works late into the night. So we would be there um, if we had an event, late as 2 o'clock in the morning or on an average night, just around 10.30 to 11. 
we would have one girl counting cash doing the deposit and the other employee would go turn off the lights, lock the doors, and do stuff like that. I guess it's my turn. Yep. Mariah heads to the hallway in the back to shut things down for the night. So it was my first time closing, and as I was starting to turn off all the lights, it feels as though there's someone walking out of the room behind me. I was concerned that maybe there were still clients in there, or employees, or worst case, someone had gotten into the spa that wasn't supposed to. Despite no one being there, Mariah feels a presence. It is following her. When I would leave each room and start walking down, it almost felt like it was a couple steps behind me everywhere I would go. Hello? I looked behind me and there was no one else in the hallway. That was the first time I had ever felt very scared. The next night, Mariah cautiously returns to the salon. It actually started getting a little bit weird and uncomfortable, and just like the feeling of someone behind you when you were alone at the desk. While doing front desk duty, Mariah hears someone walking. Hello? She follows the footsteps down the hallway. I was holding my breath. Uh, I didn't want to see anything out of place. I didn't want to see anything that wasn't supposed to be there. It was like dread and that cold feeling again. I hear footsteps behind me. At that point, it was more of than just like a feeling. That's what made me start to freak out a bit. Mariah is relieved her coworker has arrived. There's someone in the massage rooms. What do you mean? I felt someone. I saw someone move past me. I explained to my coworker what had happened, and she was newer too. We had both kind of started together, and we were just like, again, this is our job. We have to finish what we need to do. She implores her colleague to go back with her to check out the hallway. Neither of us wanted to go in there. We didn't know what we were gonna see. Clipboard. You're that scared, huh? Here. Okay, we should go. Okay. There was a noise of the door opening up. We called our manager at that point. I just wanted to let you know that um, we were just closing up the spa and a door was just slammed shut and we just don't feel safe here anymore. So I think we should just close up for the night. I think we would feel much better if... It was just kind of silent on the line for a while and she laughed. No one really took us seriously. We kind of felt that they didn't want to listen to what we were saying. We right. Okay. Have a good night, thanks. Bye now. What'd you say? Client's still coming. We close up after the client. Okay. Yeah. Let's just finish up with her and then we'll be done. We'll be out, okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But at the end of the day, it was my paycheck, so I had no choice. They return to work. They're counting the minutes until their final client arrives. As I was pulling files, I had that same electricity in the air feeling. Footsteps again, coming from the same dark hallway. I 
I could hear folders falling and you could hear the papers scattering out onto the floor. Another file came, not just like falling off of the shelf, but it launched itself. It was really aggressive, and I think that's where the fear came from, because it wasn't just, oh, that accidentally fell. Like, that, someone made that go across the room like that. So usually when objects are moving around, that is a sign of a poltergeist. What they do is they draw energy from a living person, and that energy manifests itself in objects being flown around and stuff like that. A poltergeist haunting has steps, and it can escalate to the point where it can really cause a lot of harm. What do you want from me? There's nothing serene about Mariah's night shift at a spa in a renovated warehouse. A taunting presence stalks her in every moment. <laughs> Tonight, the presence is just a few feet away. What do you want from me? A poltergeist usually needs an agent in order to draw its power from. And so Mariah might be the agent for this poltergeist. Look, we're gonna just finish with the last client and everything will be okay, all right? Just relax here, take these. You're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. One final client and the girls can leave. And this terrifying night will finally be over. Mariah will be taking care of you today, okay? Hi. This is the changing area, Shark. I set her up with her locker. I get her all of everything she needs. It's really quiet in here. Hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> but the poltergeist won't leave Mariah alone. It follows her. I go back to my desk and I'm sitting there. Help me! Help me! Mim, are, crazy. are you okay? What, what happened? Within minutes of her changing in the locker room, she comes running out and she's crying. There's someone in there! In the locker room? Yeah, I swear I heard her giggling. She says to me, I don't want to be here. Someone tried to get into my dressing room. And I swear I heard someone like giggling. I didn't know how to respond to that. You need to get out of here. There's someone here. Ma'am, wait, wait, wait. It was terrifying because I knew there was no one physical in that room with her. Mariah puts on a brave face and goes to investigate the changing area. At this point, I was scared. I was incredibly nervous. That was a very strange thing to have to deal with. So I kind of walked into the locker room with a lot of courage. And I was like, I need to figure out what's going on. She immediately senses a disturbing presence. Something was wrong. It was kind of like when you walk into a room after someone's had a really bad argument and you can feel that tenseness in the air. And as I'm walking down, the shower at the very end has the curtains closed, but every other shower is open. Then I get that feeling again. Like the same feeling when I was closing out the rooms, like there's someone right behind me. It's like the whole air gets thick and electric and you can just feel that you're not the only ones in there. And I think it was like it wanted to make itself known. Hello? Somebody there?
sorry, I, I, I just got freaked out by myself. But there was someone in there. Come on, Mariah, let's just go. But then we are walking out of the locker room, and as we do so, the shower curtain that we had just torn open <laughs> flings itself shut, and in that moment, we are frozen in fear. What's that? I don't know, I don't know. Then it got worse. <laughs> we were scared. We were very scared. We knew that there was something there that wasn't a human being. Everywhere that I would go, it would follow me. So there's multiple reasons why a spirit might attach themselves to a person. Um, one is that the person is experiencing a lot of stress. In Mariah's case, she is working at a spa late at night, and she's young, and she's afraid of all of these events that are happening to her. And so if there is a spirit in that location that is looking for somebody to attach themselves to, Mariah is a perfect target. Even to this day, I'll sometimes feel like there's always someone a couple steps behind me. I feel like regardless of what job I go to, that spirit and energy is still there with me. Look at you. My name is Wayne, and I work the night shift. Every evening after 11, communication technician Wayne and his partner start their graveyard shift in the downtown core. My job entails going to the various offices that provide customers with internet service. And I do this primarily in the evening because that's off hours. That's when people are not using the services. And we carted in the building and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. A lot of stories about it being haunted, strange sounds, strange feelings. There's a lot of uneasiness about the building. When you look at the building from the outside, there is nothing that would suggest that there's anything haunted. I just blew it off as stories. We went into the floor that we had to work on. My partner and I are in the process of starting to do the preliminary installation work for the following day. It's at that moment where I start to hear a metallic sound. What is that? You tell me. It's a banging noise, but it's rhythmic. It's not random. It's just as if somebody was banging a baseball bat steadily on a metal pipe. So it was like, kunk, 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 kunk. Kunk. Just like that. We began to systematically search that floor, going to where we thought the sound was the loudest. The sound didn't get any louder. In fact, it just kept getting progressively quieter until it just didn't exist at all. What now? And I said, I don't know, I've kind of got no answer. Wayne's colleague isn't satisfied. He takes a look on the factory floor. 
And now, a new disturbing sound. Many of the stories that come out of that building are of unseen footsteps. You can hear them, but you don't see anybody. I had never experienced any of that. But Wayne's colleague is hearing them. Very quickly after that, another sound had presented itself. At first, it, I didn't know what it was. It was out of character for the building, and it was a clicking. It took me about 10 or 15 seconds to realize what I was hearing was an old school typewriter. The sound uh, was so very close. It was not more than six feet away from me. But it sounded the same as if someone was actually typing a letter or something. Again. But you would hear that mechanical chick, 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 chick. And just like the sound, it just disappeared, altogether gone. Meanwhile, Wayne's partner senses something in the elevator. There's something in here, man. Wayne and his colleague agree there is an unwanted visitor. We had a definite problem. Let's go check the security cams. Did we have an intruder in the building? We had to investigate this further, so we did. If there's someone in here, we can see it on these cams. Wait. What is that? We went as far as calling our dispatch to find out if somebody else had used the security cards no. to get in the building. You sure about that? Come on now, Wayne. Just two of us. OK. Our dispatch said the only two people that were in the building was my colleague and I. OK, thanks. Yeah, no problem. It's just us. We're alone in the building. No way. That can't be to be told that you're actually alone in the building. The fear is growing. This is not normal. We both got back to work, but there was a feeling that this wasn't over yet. It isn't over. It's just begun. Spidey senses are starting to go off a little bit now, and you get that, that cool feeling on the back of your neck. And in my right ear, I hear a woman whisper, He's coming. He's coming. What made it more real for me was I could feel the exhale on my skin. It was real. There was a presence there. He's coming. Communication technician Wayne and his colleague are working in a building rumored to be crawling with spirits. Wayne can't deny what he's experiencing. In my right ear, I hear a woman whisper, He's coming. He's coming. I hear it clear as day. There's no women in the building, and we are alone. Run! I was terrified. It was real. Uh, 
and then to turn around and there's nothing there? So what made the voice and what made the breath? In some ways, spirits are like unruly children who don't get their own way. They crave attention. It has to be extremely difficult to be around the living and none of them can see you. So how do they react? They knock, they bang, they touch people. They will sometimes do things that are extremely frightening in order to get attention. Wayne's co-worker keeps searching. He knows he felt a strange presence at the elevator. Is anyone there? Wayne? He heard disembodied footsteps that he thought were me. Were you thinking maybe we should just leave? We can't just leave. You know, we've got a, an unprecedented amount of work that we would be accountable for. We'd have to have some explanation to our managers in the morning. It's like, well, why did you leave 100 people out of service? Well, there's ghosts. <laughs> They're not going to buy it, right? We just kind of like push it into the back of your mind if possible, and uh, you just go back to work, get it done. But the entities won't let them. One common aspect of hauntings is that we see different layers. We might see spirits from the Prohibition era existing in one part of the building, completely unaware there is a more modern entity, layer upon layer upon layer, all independently of one another. And now, there is a tap, tap, echoing from the abandoned elevator. But there's more than strange sounds waiting for Wayne. I'm waiting for stuff to clear on the computer screen. I raise my head up, and I see a woman. She's got a skirt on. It's kind of a tan color. But she looked like one of the girls from the operator services from the 20s. I was blown away. I had never seen an apparition. I'd never seen a ghost. The tap, tap continues. It's coming from inside the elevator. He turns his back and freezes in fear. And back in the office, behind Wayne, she's there. Run! He's coming. The co-worker makes a run for it. She was there and then she was gone. The lull is temporary. Wayne! And that's when I hear him call my name. Wayne! Top of his lungs, just screaming out my name. That sound went right through my spine. Uh, it just shocked me. There's something in here, man. I said, are you all right? He said, I saw a guy. I'm like, what kind of guy? He's like, old guy, like wearing a blue shirt kind of thing. Where'd he go? He just disappeared. I heard the rumors. I didn't believe it. He was shattered. Let's get our gear. Get out of here. We've had enough, like just enough. whole building shook. The floors, it was like a, a ripple effect went through the floors. I could feel it right through my feet, actually right into my hips. The building is going to collapse. I'm not going to be in it. Outside the building, the world is unaware of their nightmare. It's fight or flight. We were running before the, our feet touched the ground. Wayne and his co-worker make their way out. The female apparition who yelled, run, appeared to be warning them. Never again. I'm done. 
I'm out of here. So my partner, he transferred off that shift pretty quick, though. Uh, he was done. Wayne tries to make sense of what was terrorizing them. There was a rumor that during the construction of the building, the first elevator death recorded in the city was during the construction of the elevator where a gentleman fell from the fourth floor. Then died at the bottom. This isn't the spirit of a living person left behind after their death. This is a type of paranormal recording replaying itself over and over again. He's not conscious. He's not sentient. He's an echo. It blew my mind. The world is bigger than what any of us can imagine. Beyond. I don't think we'll ever grasp it.